at Homebush Bay, the site of the Olympic Park in Sydney, where there was a fairly comprehensive plan instituted for post-games use. We see that the venues here still act in a parasitic way relative to the rest of the city. There are a finite number of large-scale sporting events and performances that necessitate such large settings in the Sydney metropolitan area. Most of those venues existed prior to the construction of the summer 2000 game sites. To maintain the viability of Homebush Bay, other arenas like the Sydney Cricket Grounds have lost revenue. Additionally, the rezoning of a large swath of the Olympic Park for office for commercial use is having a deleterious effect on the neighboring township of Lincoln, which is just off the right of this slide, which also has been trying to encourage development and investment on its own. This is not to say that the development has been all bad, but take it on the whole, there is a parasitic quality to the legacy so far. And perhaps the most dramatic alteration for reuse of the main stadium, Atlanta planned from the get-go to chop almost a third of the structure off and create a new baseball park for the Braves, Turner Field, with the transformation beginning almost immediately after the conclusion of the Olympics. As far as stadiums go, baseball is one of the most conducive for creating a synergistic development effect with the city surrounding it, because of the long season, relatively small footprint of the facility, a large number of games played. So the site had the potential to be nicely activated by the regular influx of people, as evidenced by some of the classic stadiums around the country, like Fenway, and Chicago. Unfortunately, uh, that opportunity for a strong mutualist relationship to leverage the inherent advantages of a baseball park with urban Atlanta, which could certainly use some of this work, as you can see, missed. You've probably been wondering where we were going to see Beijing. I was going to do that too. <laughs> 29th Summer Olympia in Beijing, the biggest and most extravagant entry in a long list of over the top of members for this event. Beijing had more athletes, more members of the media, more countries competing, spent more money, and built more stuff. In any category you can think of, they probably did more than anybody has done before. The banners around the city proclaim, New Beijing, Great Olympics, or in direct translation, New Beijing, New Olympics. We'll never know precisely what the direct impact of the games was in the transformation of the city, as opposed to other agents of change already in play here. But it seems clear that the Olympics provided a crucial nationalizing sentiment that gave the central government even more latitude in their planning decisions than is typical here. Being in Beijing is a bit overwhelming any time. But to be there during the games took the experience in a whole new direction. I'm glad I was able to see this city before, because there is so much that was done to present a good face to the world, that some parts hardly seemed like the same place I was just a year prior. The lack of traffic, noise, pollution, even cigarette smoke was exciting. <coughs> the thing that made the city seem most strange at that moment was the halt of the building construction. It gave Beijing a quality of being complete, that truly changes the character of the place. While we before felt as though one were witnessing the explosive transformation of a virtual economy, now that, that the dust had settled and the sky had cleared, one could see what sort of city Beijing had transformed itself into.